And I take it you can hear me fine then. Right. It's okay. nice and clear. Uh, yes, transcription has recording and transcription have started so that everybody is aware. So yeah, please, Ace, uh, whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tim, for for the introduction and good day, everybody. Um, it's a pretty awesome feeling to be transporting uh, across the world and teleporting across the world. Uh, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. It's actually past 9 p.m. in the evening already for me, which is which is pretty cool too. Time travel and uh, and space travel. Um, but I I do want to take the opportunity to just introduce myself briefly so that you know who who this dude is talking to you from from down under. <laughs> um, so my name's Ace Buck. I'm a 20 year old student from the University of Melbourne. I'm an undergraduate student. I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Science, and in that degree, I'm studying mechanical engineering and software engineering. And I'm also studying a concurrent diploma in Mandarin Chinese. Um, but most importantly, I'm a language learning enthusiast. I just love studying foreign languages. And currently, I spend most of my time studying Mandarin Chinese when I'm studying languages. But in the, in the past, I've also been very focused on learning French. And uh, I've also spent some time learning Spanish. My mission today, however, is, is a lot bigger than that. Today, I want to share my thoughts about how language and science are mutually beneficial disciplines to study together. And I hope that by the end of the talk, you'll be convinced that studying them is not just beneficial practically in an academic sense, but also generally because they heavily influence the way that we interact with the world. Um, for the purpose of my talk today, language most of the time will refer to language learning, that is learning foreign languages, but because language learning itself is so closely linked with the concept of language, which is the verbalization of our internal world. At times, I'm also going to use the term language to refer to the process of using words to communicate. Um, I'm personally someone who really enjoys thinking big. I take great pleasure in looking at the big picture implications of things and sitting and having philosophical musings about things. So it's for that reason that I want to begin my speech by not directly sharing my specific stories and experiences about how language and science have interacted in my life, but rather first begin by answering the question which I call the, the so what question. That's to say, I first want to start by identifying the significance of what I'm going to be discussing, which is by addressing the question, to what extent do language and science and studying them together actually have the potential to impact our lives? And once I've addressed this, I then plan to go and share my specific experiences and provide examples of uh, when in my own life there's been an interplay of language and science. Um, so my second point today will be talking about language and science as complementary fields in the context of professional competence. And then my third and final point will be an exploration of how studying language and science concurrently has been very beneficial for me personally, academically as a student. But I, I don't want to risk making it seem like the influence of language and science is localized just to something like employment or just like study at university. And it's for that reason that I want to begin from a holistic and abstract point of view and wrestle with the question, how much does language and science impact our lives? Talking from Melbourne. Yes, I'm talking from Melbourne. Yep, Melbourne, Australia. So as a as a first point of discussion in my speech, I want to assert that language and science are such powerful tools for our understanding of the world and an appreciation of both fields has a profound impact on our understanding of the world and thus underpins our actions and beliefs. So to explain why this is what I believe, I have to first share with you my conceptual model of learning and what it means to develop your intelligence. Um, because for me, when I feel like I've truly learned something, it's when I've related that new piece of knowledge to the things which I already know, and I see whether it con confirms or contradicts my existing understanding of the world. And I use new things and new experiences as a way to iter iteratively calibrate my understanding of the world and develop a more accurate understanding of the way things are and the way things work. And so in this sense, learning changes who I am because it influences my outlook on the world. However small and subtle it may be, 
Every time that I learn something new, my understanding of the world has been enriched. And I want to add to that the fact that I believe intelligence is not something that's fixed. It's something which can be cultivated. And for those of you who are familiar with Carol Dweck's research on the growth mindset, my beliefs are very much in line with this model. And I believe the mechanism to develop your intelligence is to nourish your brain with stimulating and rich input. Because by doing this, you provide your brain with rich information to process and your brain can go and identify patterns and therefore have the output of more accurate insight and unique appreciation of the world and the various areas of knowledge and academic disciplines which exist within it. So this, this is an argument in favor of studying any diverse range of disciplines and di having diverse range of inputs. But I believe that science and language are a particularly powerful combination. And to explain this, I'm going to touch on what science and language have to offer in isolation and then entertain what it means as a student like me to study them in, in concert. So science for me is the proverbial light in the darkness. It's a life raft at sea. Science, thanks to its foundation in rational thought, logical reasoning and methodology, which allows us to use our senses and instruments to gather and interpret information is the tool which allows us to establish objective truth. And I, by nature, am someone who is extremely curious about the world, but it also has a side effect of questioning everything, which means I have a somewhat bizarre predicament of undermining many things which might be easier just taken for granted. And due to this, without the grounding that heuristics and assumptions provide, I'm metaphorically lost at sea. But science is the lifeboat which provides me with the platform from which I can explore and confidently make sense of the world. Language, on the other hand, is just as beautiful, but it's different. And there are two distinct but interrelated, interrelated levels of analysis when it comes to language. There's language from the point of view of simply verbalizing thoughts and feelings. And then there's language from the point of view of learning foreign languages. And language from the point of view of touching thoughts into words is a very difficult process because it involves a transformation. It represents taking non-linear, messy, intuitive thoughts and feelings and linearizing them, trying to convey them in a verbal form. And to provide an, an, an image, it's worse than trying to square a circle. It's like trying to take this three-dimensional sphere and turn it into this two-dimensional square. It's, you're transforming it. And because language is the overwhelming form of human communication, cultivation of your language ability represents an increase in your ability to transport your thoughts and feelings into the mind of another person, which is what it means to communicate. And this is very important in my opinion. Why? Because your ideas are your children and you don't want them to go into the world in rags. You want your ideas to be recognized for the value that's in them. And, and then there's the other side of language, which is foreign language learning, which entails the opening up of new worlds and the opening up of new people and cultures to you. And it ultimately allows you to experience more of what the world has to offer, stimulate your mind and stimulate your soul. And thus, I believe, better appreciate the complexity of the world. But what about language and science together? Earlier, when I sort of talked about what I believe it means to truly learn, I underscored the importance of diverse stimulation for our minds. Well, language and science are two disciplines which are deeply connected to the human experience, and thus are particularly important and nourishing foods for our mind, which help us grow our understanding of the world. Um, but much more concretely, because I've been, and I've been talking from an abstract perspective, Science and, science and language are tools which we can learn to probe and learn about the world, and languages allow us to communicate what we find with others. So what, what I hope to have communicated here in the first point of my speech is that learning about language and learning about science has an impact that's not just localized to study and work in those fields. They influence our beliefs about the world, and they influence our understanding of the world, and as a result, the way that we interact with the world. 
So having now talked about science and language from a very abstract sense, I want to share some more concrete stories about how language and science have been beneficial for me personally. Um, and as my second point in my speech, I want to talk about how I view language and science to be beneficial uh, professionally. Um, and to do this, I just I just first want to share a story with you all. Um, in February this year, uh, one evening, I got a call from my friend Michael. And Michael and I are friends because we're both committee members on the Melbourne University French Club. And he called me up and he goes, Ace, do you want to come to a Fatchy event? And I said to him, what, is, what the hell is a Fatchy event, dude? <laughs> and as it turns out, Fatchy stand for the French Australian Chamber of Commerce. And I don't know what the I stands for, I still don't know. But uh, it turns out Michael was inviting me to a networking event. And from my point of view, I thought, why not? This is a great opportunity for me to speak some French. I'm not going to pass, pass up on that. And sure enough, the next evening, uh, I rock up at a venue along the Yarra River, which is the river which runs through Melbourne. And I start to parler français, which um, I started to speak some French. I had a few drinks. I met some really interesting people. And right at the end of the evening, I started chatting with a Frenchman. And he was really warm and he was really welcoming. And we got along really well. He talked to me about his experience learning Arabic. I told him about my passion studying languages. And eventually I let him know that uh, I'm studying mechanical engineering as a part of my degree. And it later turns out that this guy is a CEO of a Franco-Australian company which works in an engineering field. And on the spot he goes, oh, no way. Do you want an internship? And he invited me to reach out to him the next day and begin the process of seeing whether it was actually a good fit and whatnot. But the initial opportunity had been generated. Now, it might seem like serendipity or luck, but in my opinion, luck is something which is generated by creating the circumstances in which such opportunities can present themselves. My connection to the Melbourne University French Club got me an invite to this event. My French enabled me to communicate at the event. And I dare say that my French enabled me to connect with this person who I now have the pleasure of calling my colleague and boss. <laughs> so my engineering degree positioned me to work in this company. But I dare say my language learning made it happen. So. This leads me to my second sub point in this section about language science and professional opportunities, which is when you're someone who has studied and is interested in both science and language, you're someone who is uniquely positioned to be extremely valuable in the areas which exist in the intersection between science and language. So given I study software engineering, I'll take an example from this field. Um, there are a lot of language learning apps out there. So a software developer who's tasked with developing the program lo logic behind the user interface of such an app would likely need to elicit a series of use cases and understand how the app would need to be used in order to develop that functionality. A software engineer who's well versed in the, in the realm of language learning is likely to understand what is required better or understand in a nuanced way what is required and I believe have the passion to deliver a better end product. There, there are many other examples. I'm very interested in exploring the field of natural language processing further as I to progress in my education. That's how computers understand human language. And um, my software background will enable me to explore this field, but it's only in conjunction with my passion for language learning that I'm driven there in the first place. And quite possibly that I might be able to make a unique contribution. So, those are some of my thoughts on how language and science collide professionally, but I as a student particularly want to touch on their interplay and in study, of course. So as my third and final point, I want to share how language and science together in my study have been beneficial for me. So the first reason is simply that language and science are very different. So studying one discipline is a break from studying the other. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have been uh, at school when I was writing English literature essays that I was fatigued from that type of work, but found that I was still capable and motivated to go and do maths exercises, for example. 
And it makes sense because studying each discipline fundamentally involves different exercises and different practice and which offers variation. And I argue that increases my, my stamina and capacity to continue studying. The same has been very true at university for me, where alongside my Bachelor of Science, I'm studying Mandarin Chinese. And I welcome the opportunity to transition between the different types of study. And I often find it really beneficial where at a given point in a day, depending on how I'm feeling, I can choose the, the activity which is optimized for how I'm feeling and is in, in harmony with what I feel like doing at that point in time. Um, although I must admit, I do find myself studying Chinese a lot. And my, my final point in this, in this section about academic study relates to the abstract introduction to learning that I gave at the beginning of, of this talk. Um, studying language and, languages and science offers a cross-pollination of ideas. I often find that when I'm learning things in one definition, I import it and map it onto a seemingly unrelated concept from another, from the other discipline. And as a result, I feel that I sometimes stumble on what I think is an insightful, unique or creative way of articulating or understanding something. And, and that's the idea that I wish to conclude with today. While studying language and science may be beneficial to you in many concrete ways, it might help you find a job like it did in my case, or it might help you study more effectively, which it certainly does for me as a student. But it's really about much, much more than that. It's a way of nourishing your brain with diverse and stimulating input. I very much appreciate the opportunity to present to you all today. I love having exchanges on these kinds of ideas and sorts of topics. If you want to engage with me on these sorts of things, you can find me online on any social media platform using the handle at official Ace Buck. I would love to speak more about these things. And um, as a final word, I hope that you are all as enthusiastic as I am to go out there and explore and experience the world through science and language. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, Asa, xie xie huang di. Thank you, Emperor. Yong xie, yong xie. Do we? That was um, uh, an ex extremely interesting talk. I'm very glad that you mentioned uh, you know, connecting with people such as your former boss. That has often happened to me um, very much as a researcher, whereas my ability to do research is thanks to my scientific knowledge. But my ability to collaborate with people is actually thanks to my language skills. I also liked what you mentioned about Chinese being a good break from engineering and vice versa. I, when I was a student, I had the same feeling when I was studying German instead of chemical engineering. So I can relate to a lot of what you're saying. Do we have some uh, questions for Ace? Well, if you are online, you're very welcome to put up your hand. Right. Well, okay, well, maybe I could ask you a, a question as a, as, a, as a polyglot. You study Chinese, you study French, I think Spanish as well, if I'm not mistaken. So you talked about, um, you know, the, um, at the end of your talk, the how um, um, getting some nourishing input, you know, from um, you know, helps you to look at the world in a different way. And this is a way how languages might um, sort of benefit your science and vice versa. Have you noticed different effects with, you know, Chinese or with French or with Spanish or with any other language that you've learned? Have I, have I noticed effects where they're stimulating for each other or? Um... Well, 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 well that, that as well, or do you find you get a different sort of nourishment from Chinese Oh, and from French, for instance, which influences your your science and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this this is why I began in a very abstract sense because the influence of things I believe is very hard to quantify and touch into a concrete into put take take it from the abstract realm and put it into the concrete domain, because every single experience that I have very deeply influences me, and the and and what what the fundamental thing about learning different languages is for me is that it offers different experiences and different worlds. 
And a big part of that is because language is so int intricately linked with culture. So when I go and I learn a different language, I'm not just learning words, I'm not just learning grammar constructions. I'm meeting new people, I'm exposing myself to a new culture. And it comes back to that idea of enriching inputs. And, and, and the fact that they, they are diverse means that I'm, that, that I'm being exposed to the complexity that is out there in the world. And not just getting a myopic view of a, of a subset of experience, but experiencing more of what's out there on offer. Um, it's difficult to come up with a concrete example of where learning Mandarin Chinese might specifically influence my engineering education as opposed to French, but um, I, I know it does. I'm glad you mentioned the word complexity then being exposed to it. When I was uh, uh, going to some courses about selling yourself uh, outside of academia, uh, having done a postdoc, you know, we are supposed to be good at uh, getting exposure to complexity and that and being able to deal with that. And I think that's one of the things that I think learning uh, languages and also um, uh, you know, doing science can help us with exposing us to these complex situations, which can be useful in our lives and in our career. We have a couple of questions. Uh, one is from Lundi and uh, who has a hand up. And then we also have one question in the chat. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Thanks, Ace, for your interesting talk. Um, I, I'm curious about you you studying uh, software development or computer engineering. Um, when I studied uh, design at university and we had a course in coding, people always said, oh, you know how to speak languages. It must be really easy to learn uh, a coding language. Uh, personally, for me, it was very hard, but I'm curious to know from your perspective, was it easy for you to learn um, a few coding languages because of your background in language learning? No, I actually wouldn't say it made it any easier <laughs> because I, I first was introduced to coding and programming languages through Python, which is actually a, a very beginner friendly language. Um, but there is a parallel to be drawn, um, but I think the parallel is to be drawn in much like you might learn uh, a, a natural human language and that benefits that's beneficial for you for going and learning other languages once you've learned the coding language it goes and helps you in the same way because of that that interrelation um but maybe maybe um what i can say is coding languages are, ver are, are very much uh, associated with logic and um one thing which i which i notice about uh, where there's an interplay of language and science for me, perhaps is in logic where I'll go in my science degree and learn about truth tables and OR gates and AND gates, which are these digital circuits, which are fun, which, and mathematical logic, logic from a mathematical sense. But then natural human language also has a way of representing logic in our grammar and we establish cause and effect and relationships between different things. And I'm sure, as you know, each language has its uh, its own subtle way of representing and describing cause and effect and the relationship between different things. So there are always nuances, and that's sort of what I'm trying to talk about when I'm I'm talking very abstractly about how there's this interplay between these two things. But studying science and then studying languages, if you're just talking about logic that you get an appreciation of logic from a scientific point of view and then languages come together and they also provide a different a different lens through which to view that concept. And so you get different perspectives of the same thing and then a more holistic understanding of what that can represent in the world. Maybe that's not as related to the question, actually. Right. Right. Well, um, if I may uh, say, you might want to check out the uh, talk of my colleague, uh, Philip Erika, who is both uh, a linguist and uh, is learning programming, and I'm sure we'll be able to talk a lot on, on this on this topic later. Um, just a very finally, two quick questions in the chat. I'll just read them out, summarize them for you because we're behind time. Have you um, done other Chinese languages like uh, Cantonese and Hokkien? Um, and did you learn a Hansa in a natural way, or did you follow the pattern of the HSK lists? I, I guess that's a Chinese exam. So, Mm -hmm. Could you comment on that quickly? 
So I haven't learned any other Chinese languages, but I certainly would like to in the future. Um, maybe to briefly give uh, the reason for why I ended up studying Mandarin is I actually enrolled in a Spanish diploma at the beginning of uh, 2020, but decided I wanted to do, given I was going to be studying something at university, uh, I wanted to study something which I had no clue how to study on my own. And Chinese was a good choice because it was something I had no clue how to study on my own, as opposed to Spanish. I sort of had an idea because I studied French, which is another romance language. And also there are a lot of, um, a lot of Mandarin speakers and international students at, uh, at my university. And I already had a lot of friends who were, uh, Mandarin speakers. So that's why I chose Mandarin rather than any other Chinese language. And, um, how did I learn Hans? Uh, so I have quite, this one's maybe a little more difficult to, to answer succinctly because I, I have a, a whole process. I don't follow the HSK list actually at my, uh, at my university, we have our own colloquial textbook series, which we base our study off. And I follow that series and based on the vocabulary lists and textbooks through that series, that sort of guided my development of, of which characters I learn. But I try to do a lot outside of class and I try to learn a lot of vocabulary, which is specific to me. Um, and that comes through obtaining input, which is in relation to things which interest me. So trying to listen to things and watch things which are specifically things which are of interest to me. And um, just to give an example, like I, I have, I have, um, I've been, I acquired some textbooks from mainland China, which were in the scientific field. I'm wanting to learn, learn about science through Chinese and improve my scientific vocabulary in Chinese. And so that's not necessarily something that you're going to be learning early on through the HSK system, but it's something that I'm reading and trying to slowly skill myself up in. Um, that being said, I am interested in the HSK framework and I would be interested to go and do that sort of proficiency test. Um, but what I would do is immediately prior to doing it, not immediately prior, but in the lead up to doing a test, I would possibly go and look at that specific vocabulary um, so that I could be prepared to perform. <laughs> Okay, so right, uh, it's time for the break now. Thank you very much, Ace, for giving us a very refreshing talk and also a very unexpected talk on the yeah. <laughs> science and languages. Uh, um, I'm going to stop the recording now.